So I've got to give a bunch of announcements to my tutor group, who I've got this morning, and we've got a new pupil starting in the tutor group, so I need to make sure they're aware of that. And then we're doing a quiz this afternoon with the tutor group that I've had to put together for them. It's eight o'clock in the morning, and Emily Granger is arriving at the John Cabot Academy in Bristol. I'm a drama teacher at John Cabot Academy, and I'm also a lead tutor for a tutor group, which involves registering the tutor group twice a day, involves mentoring half the tutor group, doing some one-on-one -on -one time uh, to see how they're doing, uh, involves giving out notices to the students, and it involves having four structured activities uh, in the week to do with them in the afternoon. I've got a rugby fixture tonight, away, uh, away fixture, <laughs> um, and they should be gone at about three o'clock. After some announcements in the staff room, Emily goes to meet her tutor group for early morning registration. Okay, morning guys. Morning. Okay, a few announcements. Anybody going to the Barcelona trip? Excellent, we're not going to lose any of you. Okay. Um, my tutor group is M4. We are part of Mercury community. There's six tutor groups that make up a community. I've got about 27 kids in my tutor group. They range from year eight all the way up to year 11. So I've got about six of each, give or take a couple. Um, a good mix of boys and girls, and a really nice mix of some um, quite quiet students, and then some quite confident extrovert students as well, which I think was part of the reason for the vertical tutoring, was to really mix up the type of student, um, and to hopefully get the older ones, obviously, to mix with some of the younger ones, which I think works really well. Vertical tutoring has recently been introduced to the academy. This is a new system with tutor groups made up of students from different years. Steve Church, the assistant principal, coordinated the change. The principal's goal was that when he took over, within five years, we would be looking at uh, learning that with the students in mixed age group um, learning groups. Um, so as part of the way paving the path for that, we started to move towards students being integrated within tutor times as well. Um, it, it also was partly to alleviate any sort of cross-year group tensions. Shannon might be coming back in today, and as I said, if she's on crutches, can you just make sure you can look after her if you see her around? Hello, miss. Have we got somebody coming in? Is this? It's pupil Hello. Sam's first day at the academy. The M4 tutor group is an important part of her integration and will help ease her into the routine of a new school. Uh, Fraser, yeah. Joseph. Okay, thank you guys. Um, so year 11, you go straight down to assembly. The rest of you, I will see you up here for our quiz. Thank you very much. Okay. If people talk about the street, this is the street. Yeah, perfect. So your product design is going to be down there. So it's really important to give the new people a lot of attention. One, she's very nervous, the, the new student, obviously starting in a new school and not starting at the same time as everybody else at the beginning of the year. So it's really important to make sure she feels happy in, in the tutor group and welcome. So I'd made a point of letting the tutor group know that she was coming in. We gave her a buddy, somebody to sit with, somebody in the class that she would be with them for the rest of the day that could show her around and make her feel welcome and, and look after her. So. You've got English next, so I'd keep your pencil case. Yeah. Because you've got English. What else, what else do you think you're going to need? Potato waffles. Oh, peas. Ugh. That, peas? Ugh. Oh, that's for your lunch. Perfect. So is that on there now, is it? Yep, it's on there. Perfect. After a quick tour of the school, Emily takes Sam to the Inclusion Centre to meet learning coordinator Dr Debbie Reed. Have a seat. Sit down, Sam. There you go. All right, so we need to find out where you're doing, what you're doing there. Is that OK? Yep. So then you go back up to the tutor room and you've got a 20 minute That's tutor confusing. time. Why is that confusing? When did you normally have tutor time? After lunch. After lunch, yeah, we have it at the beginning and the end of the day. Yeah. My role as a learning coordinator is that I have the overview of the 80 students in the three tutor groups. So that ranges from getting to them really well. I monitor their learning throughout the school. I am responsible for their welfare, making sure that they're happy. Um, I also will get involved if there are any major behavioural issues. So Shannon's just come in late. She's been off for a few days because she's been ill and she needs a note to say that she needs to leave five minutes early from her lessons. She normally has a card to say that but she's forgotten it. So to save her getting questioned by teachers, if she's got a note from her tutor then it's really simple. This is a normal day. Obviously having a new student doesn't happen every day. Um, but it's a normal day in terms of 
students needing things, students forgetting things, needing you to write notes. You kind of, I'd see it as like a parental role almost. You're their second parent when they come into school. So if they need anything or they're, they've lost something, they'll come to you for help. Okay. Yeah? Well, so now I've got GCSE drama, so I need to just go and set up that lesson because I got them in about 15 minutes. Okay? Thank you. If you're the person who is tagging, okay, I want you to be extremely evil, okay? Somebody give me an example of somebody who's extremely evil. What could you do to be evil if you're moving around the space? Yeah. yeah. Show me. Um, okay. Yeah, finger for good. Yeah, even either, even, you know. <laughs> My day would be easier without the tutor group. Um, in, that, in the morning, I would have that time to prepare for my lesson. Um, and also, it's, it can be difficult if you have to deal with a student in tutor time for whatever reason, and then you've got a lesson straight away. It would result in you being late to that lesson. That can be quite tricky. And obviously, you've got the responsibility of looking after 27 more children as well. But I, I just really enjoy looking after them. I've been lucky that I've got a really lovely group of kids who are, are up for all the crazy games I want to do with them. But I really enjoy sort of nurturing them and looking after them and, and seeing them grow into, into quite mature students. So it's hard work, but I find it quite rewarding. Try not to throw anybody out of the way. Please don't throw a chair either. I know you might want to if you're furious. A lead tutor needs to be someone who's warm and welcoming for the younger students who are just coming into the tutor group, but also has that way with the older students and the years 10 and 11 students and, and is able to integrate them all into one collective unit and get them working together in a coherent way um, and just, just be that person who's approachable from, uh, by students at any age really. Over lunch, Emily and her link tutor, Joe, discuss plans for their afternoon tutor session. As link tutor, it's Joe's job to assist Emily with the tutor group. I think it's important that the link tutor comes in and gets involved in some activities, even if it's just one a week. I know link tutors can, can just kind of come and go once a week, but the link tutor I've got right now is really, really good and really helpful, um, and they're at most of my tutor times, you know, if they can make it just to show the students that we are there together and we're going to work as a team. She said, um, be something. Uh, well, I mentioned be. Suddenly okay. there's a crisis and Emily has to take some of her students aside. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's going to take us some time to realise that you guys mean, are, are actually genuinely nice people, that you're not going to turn on her, that you're not going to make fun of her, which is probably what's happened in the past. You know, and we've just got to make her feel like yeah. this is a safe place for her. She's going to have a nice time if she lets her guard down a little bit. I think at the moment she's got a guard up, you know, not sure who, who to be friends with and who she can trust and things. OK, so we've just got to ease her in, I think, a little bit. So one of the girls in my tutor group was having a bit of a friendship issue um, and her and some of her friends wanted to just talk to me about it and see what the next step was. So I'm going to pass on the information to Dr. Reed because um, it's involved some swearing and some physical contact. And that is something that Dr. Reed will then step in and, and take over. And, and was that scheduled? How did that just happen? That was not scheduled. Um, I happened to walk past the girl in my tutor group, could see she was a bit upset. She kind of turned her back so that I wouldn't see she was upset. And then when I asked her and said, did she want to come and talk about it? She said, yes. Yeah. So she came and then told me what was going on. Yeah. going to be all right? Yeah, I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. Dr. Reed will sort it out. The skills that make a really good lead tutor are somebody who gets to know the students really well, has very good boundaries so that the tutor time feels safe and organised. They have to be efficient because they have to do things like pass messages on and students get very frustrated if messages don't get to them. They have to be reliable, um, very caring and I think that they have to just have that kind of rapport with the students to sense sometimes when things aren't going well. I tried to explain to her why perhaps this other student was acting how they were and what we could do to try and resolve it and that I thought she was, she was being quite grown up about the situation and how she was trying to handle it. She's a really lovely pupil. I said we would do everything we could to try and get this issue sorted as quickly as possible and she seemed okay with that and she seemed a little bit more relaxed. Um, 
and I said I would pass it on to Dr. Reed straight away so that Dr. Reed could maybe pull out the other student and talk to them so that by the end of the day, when they had to be in tutor time together, something would have been done about, about the issue. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gents, the plan for today. The plan for today. I'm going to take the register quickly and then we're going to go outside. Um, we're all going to go outside today and do an activity on the hard court. So rather than girls kind of sitting around the edge watching the boys, which I know happens from time to time, um, we're all going to try and do something together. Yeah. Spread out along the line. Yeah. Boys, you've got to start on that line over there, though. Because that's the last one we're getting. You've got to start the line over there. One of the benefits that we've seen from the vertical tutoring is that it enables older students to take on extra responsibility um, and roles within the school as well, whether those be formalised ones such as leading community sports teams um, or coordinating events, uh, but also kind of informal roles where they act as peer mentors to younger students um, and we've seen some real benefits from that without having planned or intended it to be that way. Uh, with older students taking younger ones under their wing um, and working to, to help and support them. Are you all out? Are you all out? One of the benefits of the vertical tutoring system, it does take away a kind of year mentality so that often you would find that the year 11s would go around together, year 10s would go around together. Now that still happens to some extent, partly because it is only our sort of second year doing it but we have found that they integrate much more, there's much more you know, ability for students to share experiences. There's some students I've got a stronger bond with than others, because some of them I teach as well, so I see them quite a lot. I'd like to think that they can trust me, um, and I'd like to think they, they know I care about them, um, and I think that comes across with the effort I put in for activities with them, um, rather than just leaving them to, to chat amongst themselves and, and get on. I think it's nice that they see you making an effort to interact with them, even though it's the end of the day and everyone's really exhausted. I think that they like that, and then they will respond and get involved with you. I appreciate those of you who got involved and gave it a go. Uh, thank you very much. Obviously, it's not the nicest of days, but we wanted to see how it would work. So thank you very much. I hope it wasn't too painful for you. Uh, next week when you come outside, boys, you will be able to play football. Girls, you will be able to sit and watch if that's what you would like to do. Uh, thank you very much. You are free to go as the bell's about to go. Thank you. At the end of the day, Emily catches up with new pupil Sam to find out how she's been getting on. I'm just going to see how... Good, good day, bad day? Is it all right? Yeah. Yeah? OK. What, uh, how's you, how'd you get on in English? It's boring. Boring. OK. What about maths? Do you feel like you're in the right kind of group? Yeah. Does it feel like you can... That is the kind of work you're, you're used to doing? Oh, yeah. Yeah? OK. Well, what we'll do is if we... We'll chat again the end of the week yeah. and see if there's any class that you feel either it's too easy for you or too hard for you. And that way we can play around with what, what kind of groups to put you in. Yeah. Yeah? But I think the group you're in, the tutor group you're in, is really nice, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah? OK. We'll leave you alone. No, can you help me find the locker, please? Yes, I can help you find your locker. Okay.